Hi everyone, it's Paul from Alexandria Knife Sharpening again. And what I wanted to show you is uh, a couple little things here. So one, I'm going to show you how to crop an image into a circle. Because there's not a lot of great circle cropping things. But if you're trying to put an image on a round coaster, it is nice if you could crop it uh, to match the round coaster. So, uh, rather than have a weird square image on a round coaster, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm also going to show you uh, the settings real quick uh, for how to make a negative image uh, to show you what your image should look like uh, somewhat on laser pecker. I was surprised at a couple things. Uh, when I did my first coaster, uh, they, my images were coming out way too white. Um, but I'll, I'll point a couple of things out to you uh, that might make that a little bit easier. So the first thing you're going to have to do if you want to crop an image round is you're going to use the ellipse tool. And we're going to start by uh, drawing uh, our ellipse tool. We want our feather up here set to zero pixels. We want anti-alias off. So we're going to turn that off. Uh, and we want to click and drag to make our selection. And we can adjust it if we need to. But we're going to kind of click and drag like so. And then I can move it around to make my selection. And I want to get all of his rifle in here. And that's pretty good. Good. Let me see. Yeah. Oops. I lost my edit. Undo. Deselect. Okay. So there is my ellipse. So I can hold the shift to maintain the circle, and I can hold the space bar uh, to move the circle. So if I wanted to move it, the whole thing around, I can do that. So if you have a little marching ants around here, that's exactly what you want. And now we're going to go to click layer mask on the lower right, which is down here. Uh, and we can just click this. And now we have a layer mask around our round image. So all this out here is invisible. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to reposition it so that we can uh, trim off the excess at the tops and bottoms. So we can uh, do this a couple different ways. We can uh, press V will give us our move tool and I can move the image to the top here. Okay, so now I have very little excess there. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to trim the rest off. If we go up here to image, we have trim. We hit trim, and boom. Now we've trimmed it, and now we have our image with a layer mask around it in a nice round circle. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to export this as a PNG. So I'm going to export this as a PNG file. And I want to make sure I put it where I can find it. So for now, for me, I'm just going to throw it right here on my desktop. I'm just going to leave it open there, make it nice and easy. Okay, so that should have moved the copy to my desktop. Now I'm going to go back to Laser Pecker software. So this is what I wanted to show you. What I did a couple test prints. And let me show you what adjustments I had to make to make it visible. So let me show you. So this, so you can see here I have a, a, a 0.1 on the contrast and a 0.7 on the brightness. So let me bring this back down and show you. So this is what the image 
kind of looked like um, when I brought it in. And this was actually modified for platinum palladium printing, which is a different uh, printing process. But you can see uh, that was significantly, uh, I had to make some significant changes here. Now, what you need to keep in mind when you're working with a negative image, keep in mind that just the opposite is what you're looking for. So if it's printing too bright on a negative, bright is the opposite. So black is going to be white and white is going to be black. So if you need your image darker, you're going to need to brighten the image like this. And we were what I said at uh, 0 0.7, right? And the contrast, we were at 0 0.1. So let me show you what that picture looks like regularly. So look how much darker this. So that's significantly darker. So if your image is coming out way too bright on your slate, when it's because you are going to need to darken it and probably in increase the contrast some so that it, when you invert it, it's going to be it's going to look a lot brighter. So this would be a really, really bright negative uh, for normal photography purposes. All right. But keep in mind, we're not dealing with exactly normal photography stuff here. So just keep that in mind. If you see on your slate, if what you're running is coming out way too bright, you're going to have to darken your image down and then go to your inverted negative image. And it should look something similar to this will probably give you a pretty good result. All right, so now that we know that, I'm going to start a new image here. All right, so let's close this out. First, we're going to, we're going to quit the preview because I had a preview up here. And I want a new image. I'm going to import the new one that I just did. It should be right on my desktop. There it is. And, oh, I forgot. I have to do it this way. I got to add it this way. There we go. Okay. So here's my uh, desktop PNG. Boom. And there you go. You can see it came in. And that looks good. Uh, my coaster size is uh, four inches. We want this on dither mode. We're going to. Uh, bring it back to where it was before and let's go and do what we already knew. We know we were at a 0.7 and a contrast of 0.1 and now I'm going to invert it. All right. So now this should be very, very close also. So uh, I was also using, uh, let me give my settings over here. I was using a uh, shell slab. I was using 2K. I was using 45 I think was my power a depth of one so very low depth one and that should be in image mode and it is now let's take a look at our preview and now this now let me measure my coaster here to get a ballpark idea of uh, millimeters on this 100 even should be around right around 100 millimeters and we're really close to there so I'm going to bump this up to 100 so now I'm at 100 and I got my square box and it's right at the edge of everything all right so you can see my square is a lot almost the perfect edges of this uh, coaster and I need to go up to get my little laser beam focused and that looks good to me I put my cutting plate in because I know I'm a little bit over but that should be that should be almost perfect now let's check our center I'm just going to do this center dot oh you know what that's not going to show me center because I'm not centered my picture's not centered so, I'm to my back. so let's go back to our scope 
All right, next step. So everything looks good here. We have a depth of 145. Let me put my glasses on so that I can film this. And let you guys see what's going on here. So everything there looks good. And we are going to confirm here on the computer. And let's see what happens. So hopefully we should get a fairly nice image on this coaster. So it's still transferring the file. So it gets done. And you see it up at the very, very, very edge there up top. It looks like it's starting. And I wanted I want this image to kind of fill the whole slate. So I really went for that kind of whole slate piece. Yeah, okay. So I can see it. It's starting to form there up at the top. Already a minute, so this is going to take some time. So I'm going to just stop this video right here and go back and do a time lapse for you. Okay, so we just finished. The uh, laser took 18 minutes to do this image. Let me just back this camera up a tiny bit so I can open the door. And wow, that looks great. Wow, it really came out beautiful. Look at that, guys. So this is an image of the uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. That's the uh, old guard uh, soldier that marches in front of the tomb. The uh, uh, Arlington Cemetery is not far from where I live. And... Uh, I went there and took this picture. They are always out there. They mar they are out there marching in front of the tomb all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They've been doing it for decades. And uh, as you can see, this was in the rain. See all the umbrellas out there uh, and the families back there watching the, uh, the uh, old guard soldier. And uh, this is one of my favorite pictures uh, that I took here in Arlington a few years ago of uh, the soldier there. But, uh, but there you go. So there's the uh, result. And uh, I'm really happy with how that came out. So I hope that helps some of you uh, get an idea of where your settings are, are going to need to be to uh, get an image on Slate. Uh, because as you can see, it's going to look uh, significantly different uh, in your laser pecker software. You're going to, you're probably going to have to really uh, brighten that negative uh, significantly. So, uh, I hope that helps you guys. Okay, so I just wanted to clear up a couple things that, uh, after watching the video that might confuse some of you. When I brought this picture in from Photoshop, it was already a negative image. So if you see me clicking the invert button, it's gonna be the opposite. So when I was turning it off, it was making it look like a normal picture. If you bring a normal picture in, when you clicked invert, it's gonna make it look like a negative. So I just wanted to add that. And I also wanted to let you know, I treated my coaster with this stuff from Folk Art. It's an out, outdoor matte finish. I just brushed it on. It is a, a water-based matte finish. I brushed it on with a brush and let it dry. And I literally only let it dry like Oh, just a few minutes, like maybe five minutes, and went right into the laser. So it didn't have to dry overnight or anything like that. It worked relatively quickly, and so I just wanted to let you guys know that. I will leave a link, a link to the Folk Art matte varnish that I used, and I will also leave links to the coasters that I use in the description of the YouTube video so you can find those easily if you need them.